warning. This episode contains strong language. That's why I always tell the guys, like, when they're cooking in the, uh, the, in the pit room, I'm like, dude, if you can cook on these and you can master the art of open fire, like, you can, you can cook your ass off. Like, yeah, 100%. fire is such a, fire is such a delicate way of cooking. Uh, that I mean, you know, if you, once you figure out the temperatures and, you know, the flow of stuff, like, you're kind of like, I'm not going to say unstoppable, but you, you have a lot better understanding of uh, cooking and heat and stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Plate Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong, or you can call me Patrick, or as my family in Mexico calls me, chorizo, whatever you want. All right, which is appropriate today because... We are speaking to Leonard Botello the fourth. Now, before I tell you what he does, I'm going to give you a few moments to think about it for yourself because that's just a cool name, right? So you're thinking, what does this person do? So just go ahead and shout out uh, different uh, uh, professions you think that name might have. I think that'll be cool. Okay, right? Nope, that's that's wrong. That's that's wrong too. Not even close. Yep, someone's getting hotter. Nope. Wrong. Okay. I'll tell you it's uh, he barbecue. Boom. Owns a barbecue place. Truth barbecue. Okay. Very easy. The truth. They bring you the truth. Love the name. The reason they came on a radar is because recently they were featured in Texas monthly's 50 best barbecue restaurants. They were number 10. That's amazing, right? Number 10. And mind you, this is for Texas, right? But Let's be real here. Might as well be the world, okay? Because Texas barbecue is the best. That, that, that's just a legitimate. That's not just because I'm from Texas. But it's just, it's the best barbecue. It really is. We just know how to do it here. And you find great barbecue all over the state. It's amazing. Um, but it is, you know, coincidentally, that is something we talked about in the podcast. Um, the differences between barbecues in different states and, and what separates them and, and that sort of thing. So that was cool too. Uh, and we also just got into the process of what makes you know, their barbecue, truth barbecue, their barbecue is so good, what the differences are uh, and what they do with brisket and ribs, you know, and sausage, uh, which was great. And also how they're handling it through the pandemic, right? Which has been interesting uh, as well. So this is a really cool conversation. Our very first episode we've ever done on barbecue. So I was really excited to do this podcast. And I think y'all are really, really going to enjoy it. You're going to learn some stuff. So, you know, get a notepad out, take some notes for the next time you make some barbecue. And if you're in Houston or outside of Houston, you can check uh, Truth Barbecue out. So um, I'll give you a quick little backstory uh, before, you know, the interview starts. So Truth Barbecue started as a roadside outpost in Brenham, Texas in July of 2015. Brenham is just outside of Houston, by the way. So Leonard uh, Botello IV took a used uh, clothes pit and a small building on Highway 290 and turned it into a barbecue hotspot, bringing in people from Austin, Houston, Brenham, and after a while, all over Texas. So it gained critical acc acclaim. Um, and uh, yeah, so his uh, his parents pitched in making the homemade size and the biggest cakes you've ever seen. And um, yeah, after they grew and grew, they opened their second location in Houston. So now it is, you know, Truth Barbecue family. So pretty great. Uh, can't wait to go uh, eat the food in person. So anyway, great episode. That's coming up in just a moment. Before we get to that, don't forget, let's go over our new segment. Bet you didn't know that. All right, so we are sponsored by Texas Real Food, and we thought we'd bring you some uh, Texas Real Food food facts. Yes, I said food twice there, fast. But if you follow Texas Real Food, which I recommend, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the social media platforms, um, you know, we're on Reddit, uh, YouTube, uh, whatever. But but mainly on like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, they they always put out these cool post with facts on them, you know, food facts. So that's all this is about. So let's go over a few here. All right. 
Did you bet you didn't know? Okay, Texas is the fifth largest. <laughs> Texas is the fifth largest wine producing state in the US. Bam, bet you didn't know that. So now you do. Olives, and by the, by the way, Texas wine is phenomenal. Okay, don't let anybody tell you that Texas wine is no good. They're, they're thinking, okay, maybe 15 years ago, you know, it has considerably gotten better and better. Uh, you know, even 10 years ago, it was doing, doing good. So now look where it's at. It's Texas wine is legit. Let me tell you something right now. All right. They figured out what grapes to grow in this climate. That's that's what happened. Tempranillo being, I think, the first one. Anyway, not to get too deep on that. All right. Second food fact. Olives are the fifth largest perennial food crop, fruit crop in Texas. Look at that. Wow. Olives. I thought it'd be more than that, actually. You know, they do a lot of fresh pressed uh olive oil here in texas especially in the hill country it's delicious so that's pretty cool all right third food fact texas has the second highest number of hamburger joints in america wow i don't know what number one is i wish i could tell you what do you think it is let us know tell me what the number one is i have no idea but that's that's yeah it's got it's all the water burgers all right especially on i-20 there's a what they literally you can see water burgers going from one end of the state to the other um yeah we love hamburgers in texas baby yes we do i do Chicken love love um hamburgers all right T uh last food fact here we go texas barbecue appropriate today was influenced by the cooking technique barbacoa so there you go. Look up barbacoa. And what does barbacoa mean in Spanish? Barbecue. So there you go. Um, so there's some connection there. You can Google that, get it, go down a deep, deep dive onto the history of barbacoa and how it led to Texas barbecue. Pretty cool. All right. Um, you know what? I'm throwing one last food fact just, just because of Thanksgiving. So we're just going to throw an extra one that's coming out. All right. Um, which Thanksgiving is, is Thursday, guys. So a couple days away. Um, all right. Texas is a top three pecan producing state. There you go. So we are in the top three producing pecans. So make a pecan pie. Uh, why did I sing that? It was like make a pecan pie. Um, do that. Do, do it. Do it and listen to me. Yeah. Everybody knows in Texas, right? Pecans. Massive. Huge. Great. Wonderful. Amazing. Awesome. Glorious can't keep going okay all right so enough of that so that was our segment bet you didn't know that now you know that all right last thing uh on the texas real food site go remember go to texasrealfood.com slash discover this is a cool article top five farmers markets in texas perfect for your last minute holiday shopping so you can find out if those are close to you or near you and if they're not Remember, just go to the website, Texas Real Food, and just put in your zip code, and then you can find other, you know, farmer's markets that are around you. But these are five that we put together uh, for your last-minute holiday shopping. So check that article out. Uh, and for other articles, recipes, you know the drill. All right, enough of that. Don't forget, if you want to find out more information about the podcast, go to thelonestarplate.com, and you can find everything about us there, and also past episodes, things like that. And don't forget... Go to uh, check us out on YouTube, the Texas Real Food Channel, um, where we upload, we, we break down the podcast into clips on there. So that's really cool. But, you know, we, we put the podcast up. So if you want to watch the podcast, that's where you go to YouTube. Um, but, you know, we also break it down into clips if you just want to digest it that way. And maybe you don't have time to listen to uh, the whole podcast. So uh, just another way to take it in. You get to see my beautiful face and the beautiful face of the guest uh, as well. So... Without further ado, let's get to some barbecue and talk to uh, Leonard, right? Let's do this. All right. So, yeah, without further ado, my guest, Leonard Botello IV with Truth Barbecue. Enjoy. Or should I say, bon appetit. You're, uh, you're down at, the, at your restaurant, right? Yeah, I'm at the Houston location right now. 
Yeah, right on. So I know you probably got service here later on, right? In in a little bit. Uh, no, no, we're just finishing up right now. So we're just open from eleven o'clock until we sell out. Oh, the, the beauty of barbecue, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> at, least, <laughs> at least for that that aspect, uh, you got to be up super early, though. Uh, that's for sure. Um, yeah. Well, well, listen, man, I really appreciate you taking the time, man. I'm super excited to, uh, to talk to you, um, you know, about barbecue. Uh, who doesn't love barbecue? This is Texas. I'm in Austin, man, so I'm not too far from you. I'm going to definitely have to come out and, and check this out. Just looking at all the pictures and stuff, man. Honestly, it wasn't a good idea. I haven't really eaten yet. So I, I was like, oh, my God, I got to get some of this food. Um, so, yeah, let's talk a little bit about it, Leonard. Uh, Truth Barbecue, man. This just opened last year. So this is all yeah. brand new. This is crazy. You're making so, uh, a th impact this, here. The, yeah, the Houston location. The, yeah, the Houston location opened in uh, January 2019, and then the, the original one was in 2015. But uh, the Houston one's doing good. It's just a lot bigger. Oh, right on, right on. So the original one was in Brenham, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So that's five years. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I thought it was all last year. Um, okay. So you, you've been rocking. No, no, no. That, that would have been crazy. <laughs> right. That would have been crazy. That's what I was thinking. I was like, damn, man, you're making quite an impact. Uh, although it can happen pretty quick. Normally it takes some time because pit masters and everybody sort of connected yeah. and right. Everyone sort of knows each other in some, in some instance. Um, it, it's interesting. Did you ever do these like barbecue competitions and stuff that they have? Uh, cause a lot of times those people are not working for restaurants or just, you know, doing it on the side, that sort of thing. H have you ever done those? No, no, not really. Uh, I've never done any like, like competition, competition, just like, like, um, chopped and like some other stuff. But that was like after, that was after I got started with barbecue. Everything's kind of like just bullshitting in the backyard kind of yeah. thing. Like, and then I kind of <laughs> got fix, fixated, just got fixated on it and then just kind of went from there. But it was like, uh, yeah, I never did any competitions or anything like that. Just kind of having fun with it which I yeah. think was a little bit better because, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I hear you for sure. Um, it, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Sometimes sure. it's hard. Like the, 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 like the, a lot of the competition guys, you know, they get a, um, you know, get a few good wins under their, uh, under their belt. And they think that they can cook the best barbecue in the world. Well, yeah, I mean, they, a lot of them can, a lot of them can, but it's just, you know, it's, it's a whole different world. Uh, exactly. It's a whole different world. I was just curious if you knew that. Yeah, I've worked in restaurants for so long and I've always had people come up to me. Oh, hey, you got to try my buddies. Got three gold medals in the barbecue oh, something yeah. or other. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I, you know, it's a uh, but, you know, I can't imagine barbecue. Barbecue is barbecue. It's really hard to I don't know. Even bad barbecue in Texas is like I'm still OK with for the most part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm yeah, sure I'm you're saying it's higher. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know. It's it's meat on fire. Like, let's do this. Uh, well, so, like, if you go if you go anywhere outside of like Texas, and then you have bad bad barbecue, it's like whole different. Like the bad barbecue here is still on a top tier level <laughs> compared to other places. That's a great point you make, man. Absolutely, yeah. that that's a great point you make, and and especially if people are outside of texas promoting texas barbecue outside of texas because then you eat and you're like yeah. this ain't texas barbecue why don't you ju just call it what it is barbecue here barbecue yeah. right like th this place barbecue um yeah that, that's hilarious I, that's actually one of the questions i was going to ask you what are the differences of barbecue outside of texas is there different they're, they're still good right you go to kansas city you go to oh, yeah. t tennessee but, but what are some of the differences uh just the cooking style like one of one of my favorites um, that I like grown to like, and like some of my buddies have restaurants out there are like in South and North Carolina. Um, my, uh, fiance is actually from there. So like before, before all of this, we always like butted heads about who had better barbecue because they always think that, you know, everybody, everywhere that you go thinks that they have better barbecue than Texas. And then she's like, Oh shit, it's a little different out here. And it's actually really good. <laughs> but like, but, uh, like Texas is different. You know, we, we have brisket, we do ribs, we do sausage. We do, I mean, we do everything everywhere else is kind of like very, like they have specific stuff like Carolinas. I like them because they do whole hog and it's yeah. just a really unique flavor. Like 
super vinegary and then it's done over coals. So, you know, when those fat, fats are dripping on the coals and the, it's going back up to the meat, yeah. it gives it a whole different, like, uh, more of like a flavor, like you can like relate to, like anybody can relate to, like growing up, like you kind of had like, you know, your dad cooked in the backyard, your grandpa cooked in the backyard over a pit and the coals, like the fat hitting the coals, it kind of like, uh, recalibrates and like kind of makes you remember, like takes you back somewhere. Like you can kind of like feel, feel eating, feel like you've ate that before. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So. It feels familiar. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I've always, um, I mean, people always talk about it. I mean, for the most part, you know, they'll talk about, well, what we, what we season, the brisket with for instance in yeah. texas is is a little different right isn't it just very like salt and pepper heavy here supposedly yeah, yeah right? we always, i mean that's what that's what we do and a lot i like a lot of my buddies around here do the same thing it's pretty it's mostly salt and pepper heavy maybe a few things here and there but it's kind of like a good steak like you want to be able to taste the meat and yeah, the fats exactly. and stuff like that so you don't want to cover them up yeah yeah, absolutely. Man, I used to work, I had a food truck here in Austin for years and there was a food truck down the street from me called uh, Brown's Barbecue. Have you ever heard of them? I don't think so. They're on, uh, you know, it's Austin. There's tons of places, but yeah. right right off of um, South Lamar. Fantastic place, man. Just right connected to it. Just a little uh, bar, oh, yeah, right? yeah, Just I, a little I, food I, truck. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. That, that's what I love about um you know, that's what I love about barbecue, just all the trailers and stuff. Right. I, I never really I just thought, man, that's a a much bigger mess with the already running a food truck is hard. And oh, I was yeah. like, man, the barbecue guys have it tough, man. They'd have to get there way earlier than me, you know, and I was like, damn, guys, I don't know how y'all doing this. But thank you for the that's food. A, that's a hard life. Man. It's a hard Especially life, man. In a, in a truck. I don't think I'd ever be able to do barbecue in a, in a trailer. It's hard, man. It, it really is hard enough as it is <laughs> totally man it, it's just patience right like yeah. patience sitting there you know watching the fire i i briefly worked at loro here in austin yeah so you know i learned a little bit there about you know the way they do the ribs and just barbecue in general um how to cut yeah. a brisket i'll never forget the first time i cut a brisket there and they're just like dude don't ever do that again and i was like oh <laughs> shit okay and then they, well they they do it on purpose that's why i love kitchens I lo a good chef will do this is it okay do do something right and then you do it and they watch you closely and say okay but instead of just showing you first yeah. they let they want to see where you're at to see where to adjust you and yeah i'll never forget that i cut that meat and i was just like no no, no. you got to grab it right pull it in get that right cut so that it lines yeah. up and then it's consistent. That was the key also of service of we got to make these consistent. We're weighing it out constantly like, and then you get good at it. Then you're just not, you're, you don't even, you're guessing before you even throw it on the, on the yeah. scale. I've got this already. So that was cool, man. That was really good experience there uh, as far as that goes. So what, what sort of, are there any unique traits about truth that stick out for you? Right? Like for what, what people, want to go for for y'all's barbecue what what makes it say like this over the others um and i don't know just because everybody <laughs> here, every, everybody's here is like we're all super that. passionate about it yeah. and we don't really we don't try to cut corners and just put in the extra work and you know those long hours and like not trying to rush cooks and stuff like that it's just and a lot of, a lot of like, well, now there's more, more barbecue places doing that and like staying true to the craft of barbecue. Like Austin, you have a plethora of it up there, yeah. Yeah. but you know, I, I feel like we caught on at a, at a good time when it was getting, uh, it was getting uh, big and it was kind of able, we were able to kind of like help set a standard for a group of guys coming in and, you know, just like only offset smokers and wood no electricity no gas no anything like that like when people eat barbecue they and especially in Texas they want like a, an authentic experience like they can say oh man you know I, I did this I waited in the line they were I saw them cooking on the pits you know they, yeah. they were loading the fire and like the whole, whole it's a whole like theater production um and I think that that makes us unique especially in Burnham Burnham is like super small it's like two tables yeah, that was like my what I visualized like like if if I went to a barbecue restaurant like it was a shack on the side of the road, it was like not impressive to the eyes. And then you go in there and you have this badass meal, like 
it it's uh it makes you appreciate that food a little bit more so it's kind of like yeah it's kind of like what i wanted to um give that experience to um to people like i don't know if you've ever been to like mexico city or any places like that when you you know you're just eating street food like just my mom's from uh my mom's from mexico city yeah i've been there a lot. oh really yeah. oh yeah so so you know and like you're like man shit it's like you guys are making that here like it, it like blows your mind like yeah that experience. Totally. like you like you <laughs> like when you for that versus going into like a big production of like a restaurant a steakhouse like you expect the food to be good and then it's good and you're like oh it was good but you know that experience is like way different and you appreciate it more so that's kind of something that i wanted to recreate with barbecue that's awesome. That's awesome, man. Yeah. The, just the, the truth, the, the truth. I mean, the truth behind it. Hold up. Hello. It's just now hitting yeah. me. this name. Yeah. It's just now hitting me here. Yeah. It, I mean, that absolutely makes sense. And yeah, Dan, when you're in Mexico City, shit anywhere. I've lived in Veracruz. I've been all over Mexico. I, mean, yeah. I, got, I got family all over. But, you know, I tell people the best meals I've had literally sitting on a, bu- a paint bucket flipped upside down around uh, a person that's cooking in an old you don't even want to know what they're cooking out. I mean, yeah. it's so like, I mean, sanitary, forget it. And just literally out of another paint bucket, they're grabbing masa and making, you know, a quesadilla right there, which is a quesadilla you've never had before. Right? It's yeah. a different idea of what you think a quesadilla and It's blue. They make it right there on the spot. It's the best thing you ever had in your life. And it's it cost next to nothing. That's another thing, yeah. too. The price of the stuff is is unbelievable. And then, And there's no pretension behind anything they're making right it's just no. like I'm, I'm this is food i'm making this is it. what we yeah this is what we this do is what this is what we eat. I like to make. Yeah. yeah it's for the workers who are working day after day right that's it's like yeah. a routine it's the food that's like a routine you constantly right it's just this yeah i love that man that that's such a cool um philosophy uh to have and and the barbecue is is very much important about that you say about cutting corners i'm curious let's reverse engineer that what are some of the corners that people cut you know, out there in the barbecue world, you know, just like not trimming, not like paying attention. Like you want, you want all your, if you're cooking like in, and for the masses, you know, like in Houston, we have five pits, uh, like any, any of the places that are cooking on a lot of pits you want in order for the cook to be good and everything be consistent because our goal here is to be consistent. Like so-and-so first in line gets served something equivalent or if not better to the guy at the end of the line. Uh, so in order yeah. to do that in these pits, uh, you want all the briskets to be shaped the same. You want all the briskets to be, have the same amount of fat on top of them. You want it to be like nice and tapered. So the airflow goes over it the same way that all the other ones do. Uh, I mean, it's a, there's a lot of science behind it. The people, you know, it's not just throwing, throwing an untrimmed brisket, that you just unwrap on the pit and, you know, just seasoning it. There's a lot more to it, to being like consistent and uh, cranking out the same product over and over again. So that's def. I think that's probably the most, like one of the more crucial ones of not, have not cut in corners. It's just very detail oriented. Like, you know, you want everything to be, there's a, there's a reason for everything that we do uh, with the meats and how we cook them. Yeah. Absolutely. What about like fake smoke rings? Right. Uh, like, like this yeah. whole thing, uh, you know, that's something they talked to me about. I just remember that. I'll never forget that. I was like, what people do that. I didn't even know people did that until just now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either, man, but they, that's what the pit master at Loro had told me uh, that, that people do. Yeah. These fake smoke rings. I, I forget what it was. It was the a certain way you cooked it to make it seem like that's what you're doing to it, but you're not, it, it had something to do with the heat, a high heat, maybe at the beginning. I, I honestly, I can't remember. I wish I would have looked that up. Um, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to look that up. I didn't even know yeah. people did that. Yeah, man. And he's like, you know, we don't do this is ours is legit. And he, and I remember it's almost like, uh, you know, when a good steak is, is, is cooked, you can see you, you can see the way it goes from the edge to the center, right? Oh, yeah, and you, yeah. And you can tell the color, the way it blends perfectly. He yeah. was basically saying that with the barbecue. If you don't see that right blend and then, blah, and again, this was, God, this was like almost two years ago now. So yeah. I, I just can't remember that specific um, because we didn't do it that way there. Obviously everything yeah. was done super legit there. You know, Aaron Franklin was behind that. So everything was just perfect. 
yeah. uh, but you know, beyond a doubt there. Um, but yeah, that's something interesting. So, so you're saying about trimming the meat, uh, that's something there they talked about as well, like keeping it aerodynamic so that the yeah. smoke is flowing around properly. And, and yeah, that's something you're right. You know, you wouldn't think there's so much science that goes behind it, but there really is. And you guys use offset smokers, I'm assuming. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of, uh, old propane tanks. Right on. So, Let's you know, explain really that wanna... just a little bit. Yeah. For the listeners, like it maybe I'm sure some people just don't know this stuff. And to be honest, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I like cooking on those because, uh, they're very, they're not forgiving because if you, if you load a bunch of wood in there, shit's going to get messed up. Uh, but you know, like the way that they cook is just so smooth. It's like a, a really big natural convection oven and the way that it pulls from end to end. So it's cylinder from end to end, even if these fire boxes are square on the outside, they're insulated and there's still another cylinder on the inside. So when the air is coming in, it's basically swooping against the walls and creating this natural convection. Um, and you know, when you're rotating the briskets in and out and off the walls, on the walls for the propane tank, uh, basically, every part of the brisket is um, is getting cooked th at the same rate that the other one is. So it's basically like one big puzzle, but uh, it's the, it's the kind of like the, uh, that's the most efficient way that I've found to, to cook on those, on those pits. They just kind of, they, they just do the job right. Yeah. Oh, so that's interesting. You guys use propane. You don't use wood to cook them. No, no, no. They're pro they're old propane tanks. So it's all. Oh, wood. they so are yeah. old propane tanks. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you fashioned them to okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you that's know, like cool. the, the yeah, yeah, the big thousand yeah, yeah. gallon propane totally. tanks you see on this. Yeah. So, so how many briskets you get in one of the 20, 25? Uh, about, yeah, 25. 25 is that comfortable. So you know everything's got a nice amount of uh, space in between it. So it's got some yeah. air in there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, right on. No, that's awesome. So, so there's a crew, right? Is it the same crew you've had for a while working at night that that, that yeah. gets throws these in and monitors this whole thing? Yeah. So same guys been here uh, a lot of them since the since the beginning since we've opened this one, and some of yeah. the uh, pretty much everybody that worked the Burnham location also works here. So yeah, that's good. awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's like a. Barbecue creates like this family, man, right? It creates yeah. this this sort of family that people can get behind and, and it creates a lot of loyalty uh, for the business that maybe other restaurants or whatever don't really get to be to be honest with you. Yeah, you know? that's why like that's why I've noticed and that's why I like about barbecue. It's it's like the customers are a lot different than you know your everyday customer for yeah. another restaurant. They're just like Absolutely. super, super loyal. It's kind of yeah. wild. Yep. They wait in lines. They, like yeah. you said, it's all part of the theater of it. And yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad that you realize that because as a consumer going out to eat, right. What do you want to see? You, you kind of want to see the magic happening yeah. while you eat it or notice or the rustic feel like it all adds to it. And a hundred percent, you're almost imagining while you're eating it and it just makes it all taste better. Cause you're like, yeah. Oh, that's coming from that and blah, blah, blah. And look how they do. They're so precise. And and yeah, man, that, that's, that's so cool. Um, any plans to, I mean, I know you love barbecue so much. Would, are there any plans to do anything else? Would you ever consider any other uh, style? Well, I kind of wanted this to be like a stepping stone and then like to other stuff because I grew up in the, uh, restaurant industry because my parents had restaurants and then I got, kind of got caught up with it and, you know, just people like it. I've got to meet a lot of cool people and then, uh, you know when i'm out of state they're like why don't you open one over here why don't you do this over here it's like <laughs> shit like i want to do other stuff but like you know there's a lot of people that kind of want to experience that that can't get to it you know so it's like yeah. man i don't know what i'm gonna do next yeah well that's hey that's a good problem to have it sounds like right like you know what what amazing thing do i do next you know yeah <laughs> like <laughs> No, I could see, uh, uh, you know, there's lots of different areas you could go into sandwiches, different stuff, right? What's the next step? Oh, yeah. uh, full blown. I, I don't know. Um, you know, who cares? Barbecue is like, it's just so. Well, that's, what, uh, that's why I always tell the guys like when they're cooking in the, uh, the, in the pit room, I'm like, dude, if you can cook on these and you can master the art of open fire, like you can, you can cook your ass off. Like yeah, 100%. fire is such a, fire is such a delicate way of cooking. Uh, that I mean, you know, if you once you figure out the temperatures and 
you know, the flow of stuff, like you're kind of like, I'm not going to say unstoppable, but you, you have a lot better understanding of, of cooking and heat and stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. Absolutely. It translates to other things. You're going to cook other proteins, oh, yeah. other hundred yeah, percent, yeah. man. And that's really yeah. the first thing they test you on. If you go stage somewhere, if you go work somewhere, that's really one of the first things they want to know. Can you fucking cook a piece of meat here? Like, do you yeah. know what the fuck you're doing? If you get yeah. past that, that right. And some knife skills, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you follow direction, but uh, you know, cooking a piece of meat and not needing help. Uh, and you'd be surprised how many people working on lines and kitchens don't know how to do that. Oh, and, yeah. they're, and they're there. They just get stuck in the salad or a motherfucker. You're over here helping me with sauces or you're just re upping me on shit I need or, you know yeah. what I mean? Something else like you're not in charge of the fire over here. It's like the biggest deal in the kitchen. You're right, man. It's yeah. a big deal to to, uh, you know, have command of that. And yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely That's what right. I was like. Yeah. Like I, the guys, you know, they just think some, sometimes they get back there. And they, they think that they're, they're just cooking great barbecue. I'm like, dude, you could you can apply to so many other places. Like if you can control an open fire, like you can cook so much other shit. Like yep. that yep. world is your oyster, not just brisket. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. And the respect you get from other people and chefs, because it's, there's so much precision with it and talent needed to actually do yeah. that and do it right. You're going to get respect and props from other people. Right. I mean, there's just no question oh, yeah. um, about it. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a sushi chef or a Japanese chef, right. That's you just know that their skills or beyond a normal line cook or whatever, they're over here like just doing like the most amazing things, which is yeah. another sort of thing, right? Where you get to see the magic happening and that adds yeah. to it, right? It's another one of those things. I think that's, I mean, that's part of it, right? You gotta, you can't really fake it till you make it with barbecue, yeah. can you? You can't, I don't think you can really do that. I don't think uh, so. I mean, right? <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you're going to get caught eventually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're going to get caught eventually. I, I think people forget that they think about the end product, but they don't think about the means to get there. And that's the most yeah. important part of barbecue is how you got to that barbecue. Yeah. So you can't, like you said, really cutting corners is it's one, it's not worth it because you're going to have to do work anyway. Yeah. Right. That, that, that's the honest truth. So you kind of just set, you, and you're, you know, taking away value from all the other work you're doing right yeah so yeah man i'm i'm really glad that you respect it uh, the way it is and and everything that's that's really cool so what what are any anything coming up um i don't know any special events or anything you guys have coming up for for um uh, thanksgiving christmas do you guys do like buy meals for for during those times uh so not not for um not for like things. We just do Thanksgiving dinners. Like uh, last week, we did. Uh, we passed out um, uh, like sandwiches and stuff at the at the voting polls. We've been limited oh. on stuff at stuff we can do. Given uh, it's still kind of weird around here, and you don't want to step on anybody's toes. So, <laughs> so sure. it's like, do we take do we take our staff over here? Do we do catering? Do we do? It's like everything that we got a second guess because everybody is still kind of on edge. Yeah. Like, are we going to get sick? Is are, is are people still getting sick? We don't know. People are acting normal. I don't know. So we're just still kind of in the gray, in the gray right now. Yeah. Which kind of sucks. We had a lot of, uh, we were supposed to do something every month this year, traveling and cooking and everything just went to a halt. So yeah, now we're just kind of stuck in place, spinning our wheels. No, man. And I'm sorry uh, to hear about that, man. It's It's been a long road of, of a lot of people here in Austin, a lot of yeah. my friends who have places as well, man, it's, it's, uh, it's really depressing. So like, yeah, how did it affect y'all? So, okay. It, it basically kept y'all from doing, going on outside events. How did it affect, you know, what y'all do in place? Because it is very hands-on what y'all do, but I guess yeah. there's some spacing distancing from what you're doing oh, out yeah. there with the barbecue. Right. So L luckily, like luckily with the pandemic and everything, um, uh, barbecue packs up, really well to go uh, like yeah, a majority of our true. customers were, were taking it to go anyways so yeah. we're, i've never been so thankful for barbecue until that like until you hit <laughs> like until the doors are like yo you got to shut your doors and then you don't yeah. get an option <laughs> i'm like shit what are we gonna do They're like well i guess we just pack it up to go we're already doing that so <laughs> but it's kind of it's kind of weird like i never wanted to do like online ordering because i didn't want to take away from that aspect of the experience waiting in line and blah 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 you know like that whole thing that we were talking about uh, but this made us it forced us to do that like 
you know, curbs, curbside and all that stuff. Um, yeah. But it is kind of good. Like you don't realize like there's, you know, there's elderly people that want to try your food. that can't wait in line. There's people with, you know, kids, the kids don't want to wait in line. Like we were able to reach out to all those people that didn't have access to it and, uh, you know, gain more, more followers. So we're thankful for that. And luckily, you know, now that we're back open, we still have online ordering, but we still have like a line of people uh, because those people still want to experience it. So it's really cool. Like we got to kind of evolve uh, uh, from that aspect of it. And I was not expecting for that to happen. So I'm kind of not thankful and thankful at the same time. I'm not thankful we had to shut sure. everything down, but I'm kind of thankful that it made us evolve into something and being able to reach people that weren't able to come. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, you're obviously not thankful for the, yeah. the virus, uh, but you're thankful yeah. for what came out of it. Um, absolutely. I think that's the best way to look at it. And uh, any, you know, food business, uh, I'm sure is trying to make all those adjustments uh, the best they can uh, as well. And I think a lot of people are actually going to have that same good yeah. thing happen to them, where, right? Where they've implemented delivery or takeout in a way that they never did before. Maybe they did it before, but not very much. Now they've really, yeah. you know, delved into it. And it becomes another revenue stream. And when things do get back to normal, which they will, then that'll all be a part of it. And hopefully yeah. it will have uh, expanded it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Did, did you did you consider uh, wh- what the quality of the food would be in the delivery? I'm sure that was part of your decision as well, right? Because uh, that's always a decision we've, or the conversations I've had at restaurants where we discuss yeah. that. Yeah, delivery is always iffy. Like, I don't, I, we don't mess with delivery because at least here, like at curbside and somebody's picking it up, we're like, here's your food. I'm looking you in the eyes. Here's your food. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, there, there's, there's no middleman and you know, you don't risk that. So, um, but yeah, okay, uh, that's there's good. still, there's still a lot of restaurants that are kind of iffy about delivery. Um, especially when you're, when you're concerned about quality. Uh, that's it. Quality. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, well, the way it gets plated, yeah. the way it's going to yeah. show up when they open it, right? First impression. And uh, that's always an issue, especially if you have all these components that are supposed to stick together on a plate before you get it to the place. Yeah. It's like, how, how are we going to, you know, how's somebody going to take this uh, to go? It's, it's, or you don't even do to go, period, right? Yeah. In, in those, in those situations. But barbecue uh, for sure is wrapped up and go and, and whatever. So, no, man, that's, that's great, man. That's, that's just so great that, um, you know, you guys are able to still keep going and, and do what you got going. H- have there been any, um, uh, the, the restrictions are at 75% right now, right? Or yeah. am I wrong? Is yeah, that, no, that's, we're, we're at 75, um, uh, which we still have 50%. Like this is a pretty big building. Yeah. Uh, we we have 50% of the, uh, of the tables and chairs in here, just kind of like keep it sp- spread out because it does get pretty, pretty busy especially, I mean, you know, barbecue and Austin, like the, the shit gets packed. Um, yeah. and you know, people are here, they're excited. So we kind of try to keep everything spaced out because I don't want anybody to get sick and I still want to respect that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been good. Luckily, no, like awesome. I said, luckily, luckily it, it, the, the having less um, chairs and dining tables in here doesn't affect us too much because the majority of it's taken to go. Yeah. Um, so that's so good. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So you guys do brisket, you do ribs, sausage. Am I missing anything else? Brisket, ribs, sausage, turkey, pulled pork, and then we'll do some like specialty items and then beef ribs and chicken and Oh man, yeah. y'all are fried just yeah. everything here. So yeah. what what makes a good I'd rather y'all do the sausage there every day. So what makes good sausage to you? Uh I'm like really particular on like fat content and sausage because you don't want like, you can have like a really lean sausage and it's like, I like like, like bratwurst kind of sausage, like real juicy. Yeah. So that content's pretty, pretty, um, uh, important to me. Um, and then like a non chewy casing, like, like you're trying <laughs> yeah. to chew, chew a sausage and it's like, this is not working, man. Like it's just like, <laughs> Uh, it's just like chewing on a fucking rubber balloon. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, everybody's looking at you. Yeah, that's yeah, hilarious. A yeah. lot of people don't think of, think about that, but it's like, dude, it's not enjoyable. <laughs> like, I don't, if you ever had it, and a way, a good way to do that is like, uh, like we we'll uh, we'll cook the sausages to about one twenty, one thirty, and then we'll ice bath them, 
uh, and shock them. So that way they're, uh, they're still semi raw in the inside, they're, but they're not cooked all the way, but then we recook them again up to temperature, you know, to, uh, 165 degrees. And that helps break down the casing and makes it like real, like snappy. Like if you bust open a sausage, yeah. it sounds like, like real, a real pop sound. So that I, definitely helps with that. I don't know if I ever heard that, uh, uh, bathing down the, the sausages after that. So yeah. you park, you park, cook them. Are, are yeah, you saying you cook, you, are you saying you do it a second time to order or that just, yeah. You know? So, oh, okay. so when they, when, yeah. So uh, we'll then for that morning, we'll cook up another big batch of sausage. Yeah, so we'll cook all the parts, parts of sausage. Got uh, it. But okay. It, yeah. It, 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 yeah. It helps. It helps with the helps, uh, cook that casing all the way down. Yeah. Okay. That makes total sense. Oh, I love, yeah. God, I love, I love talking shop like this. This is like, this is my favorite kind of stuff to talk yeah. to other people. Like, what are they talking? Park cook. What the, just don't worry about it. Yeah. Just don't, just don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. No, that's smart, man. That's um, yeah, that's smart. Damn. Okay, cool. So anything special about the ribs? I'm just trying to get it before we go here, make sure everybody knows about your food, what, uh, you know, what to expect when they go. I don't know. Oh, sauce. Yeah. Uh, we got the sauce is probably what kind of barbecue sauce or do you just nix uh, on that? Don't even worry about do. it. No, dude, I, I I hate it when uh, people are like, "Oh, you put sauce on your your stuff." I'm like, "Dude, I really like sauce." <laughs> I just like, like I just like I like sauce like anywhere that I go. Like, fuck, if I'm going to Canes and like fucking dump that stuff all over, like I'm the same way with like all all my stuff. Like, you know, barbecue sauce. Like, I'm so embarrassed like to dump it on there. I'm like, but it's so good. Uh, like, we have like a traditional like you know vinegar based tomato like sweet and tangy um, yeah. barbecue sauce. Then we do. Um, uh, mustard based, like Carolina sauce, which has like a bunch of, uh, ground mustard, chipotle's, uh, red pepper flakes. It's just like a real tangy kind of spicy mustard. And then I just started doing like an Alabama white sauce, which is a mayonnaise based barbecue sauce. Um, that man, I really like that on pretty much everything. I don't, I don't, I don't oh, know why I didn't, didn't make it before. Um, yeah. but like during the pandemic, I started like looking up like who has different sauces, like on different, you know, different parts of the countries and like why they do it like that. And I was like, huh, you know what, like that sounds, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to make a recipe and tweak it and see where it goes. And man, we um, do the chickens and then we just dunk it in the white sauce. And then it's just like, man, it's so good. Oh my God. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I haven't ever had that before, but I've never, been to, <laughs> I've never, I've never been to Alabama and ate, uh, uh, chicken like that so it was cool uh, me neither i never heard of that to be honest with you i don't yeah. think I, I try to get through alabama as quick as i can sorry alabama yeah yeah uh, just, alabama, no, and Ar- yeah, alabama and arkansas you just gotta <laughs> yeah. drive all the way through <laughs> just yeah. don't stop let's go yeah. should we get something to eat of it what do you think let's go <laughs> going. no no just kidding uh that's hilarious uh okay man that's awesome dude well look uh so okay so you got two locations one in uh brenham which is on its way to houston what is that like four uh, two yeah. hours maybe from yeah, we're, Austin? we're we're no, we're like smacked out in the middle it's like an hour and 15 oh, hour 15. 20 minutes okay, yeah. yeah and then same same distance from from houston we're like right in the middle uh that's so awesome. yeah awesome awesome okay truth barbecue um what well, well, oh tell people how they can stay connected with all of this online social media you know uh, all sort of things uh, we always do stuff on instagram i'm real I used to be good at Twitter and it's like, Oh, I got Twitter. I got Facebook. I got Instagram. I was like, and then I got all my personal stuff. I'm like, shit, I can't update you guys all the time on all. <laughs> it's, it kind of sucks. Like I'm, I try to stay towards Instagram because that that's what I think that I'm on the most. And you know, a lot of people are on and then, you know, I get a, a, a message on Facebook. Like, why don't you update your, your Facebook? <laughs> I'm like, shit. <laughs> so if you need information, just try to look at the Instagram. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, people don't understand. It's hard. It is hard to keep up with all that shit. Yeah, absolutely. That is so funny, man. Well, cool, man. Look, I really appreciate the time. This has been awesome. Honestly, I've had a great podcast today. I talked to a, a chef who was on Master Chef earlier today. I've just had the best day today, man, talking food and talking shop. And uh, this has been awesome. So I, yeah. I really appreciate you taking the time, man, to, to talk to us today and tell our listeners about barbecue. Yeah. So. No, thanks for having me. It's always fun to talk about food with people that enjoy food so i could go on for a long time <laughs> oh man me too you have no idea uh, and i and i do uh that, that's what i do so um well listen man again I, I really appreciate it my best to you and your staff uh to everybody just wish you guys the best um you know good luck with everything and uh yeah uh, my best to y'all and 
you know, we'll talk soon. We'll, we'll send an email out when this episode goes out. It'll probably be, yeah. I don't know, a couple of weeks as usually the yeah. turnaround uh, for this stuff. So, uh, but again, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate the time and best of yeah, luck uh, tomorrow during service. Let me know when you're uh, in the area. Just shoot me an email or, or a text and we'll get y'all take care of. Oh, dude, you shouldn't have said that. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. I'll take you up for it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. That's awesome. Well, thanks again, boss. My best again. Thanks for All having right, me. All right, brother. Bye-bye. Bye. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. Yeah.